I've come to the village of Ippelpen in the south of Devon. This church has been on this site since the 15th century and there are signs of churches that predate this one. The settlement here at Ippelpen is even older. Recently they excavated signs of uh, Roman burials in the town. So we're looking there, uh, 2,000 years ago people were living on this site. In the churchyard we have the old preaching cross. These were used when services were held outdoors. Often the churches were so popular that when it was possible the preacher man would stand on the steps of the cross here and would preach to the people who stood around in the churchyard. The church door is open so I'm hopeful that we can get access inside. Before we do though if we pan up on this tower we can see the sundial at the top there This is the main nave and part way down we can see the wood screen. Often these were removed in Victorian period so it's good to see a church with the screen still in place. The carving in these screens is often very intricate as in this case this is the other side of the screen looking at the altar and at the main stained glass window High on the walls are a number of memorials. They're not easy to read from the ground level, but hopefully the camera will give you a chance to understand them. On the floor are some stones engraved. This one mentions somebody who was baptised on the 31st of March 1650. Here in the main aisle is this large black stone. Seventeen something the date on it and then as we walk down the main nave we can see the dates 1825 and 1828 and this one here it's possible to make out the date 1625 and more along there. Now this monument high on the wall uh, is quite impossible to read with the naked eye. So I'm going to zoom in with the camera. And leave you to read the details yourself. Another one here, and I can just make out the name, Robert Taylor Baines. But hopefully through the technology of the camera, you can see a little more detail. 
Lower down on the wall is the plaque listing the 23 men of the parish who gave their lives in the First World War. And beneath that, more recently added, are the names of 11 men who died in the Second World War. This plaque is to James Skinner Hodge, who for 72 years sang in the choir of this church and for 66 years was parish clerk. He died in 1920. Thomas Tucker Luxton, stoker of HMS Cossack, who died 1895 in Bombay, aged 23 years. It's really lovely when we can get inside these churches and have a look around. Really appreciate it. Here is the highly decorated pulpit. And on the wall nearby are a pair of memorials to the Croker family. This is the higher of the two. And as I come down, you can see another one here with a lot more detail. And as I take my leave of the church, uh, here is the font. So one final look at the magnificent interior of this church that has stood in Ippelpen for many centuries. Well, that's the church itself. So let's have a little walk through the churchyard and uh, see what interesting memorials we can find. We saw a memorial inside the church to Crockers and leaning against the church wall here is John Gifford Crocker, MD died in December 1850 and under there we have Mary A. Crocker and some other names. I've walked around to the back of the church now and as you can see there's quite a number of memorials here. A fairly recent one to the priest. This is Peter Stokes, priest, 1931-2002. And underneath it mentions his wife, Margaret Ruth. William Yelland died in 1876. And Elizabeth's wife died four years later, 1880. But underneath we list their children who didn't do quite so well. Henry died aged 20, Margaret aged 10, and Elizabeth aged 21. A good clear inscription for Charles Tolchard, May 15th, 1878, just 34 years and underneath his daughter Mary Ellen and she was a few months old when she died. There are no exceptionally large memorials here. This is probably the largest. Curbstones denoting the size of the plot. 
the inscription starts with Celia Mary and then uh, somebody Maria Jeffrey William William Fitz Jeffrey uh, not an easy inscription to read a little further in are some larger table tombs there's two there a pan across another three over there Let's see if we can get some inscriptions from some of them. Well, the first one's had a, another stone laid on top of it, which doesn't appear to belong to it. The one on top is Mary Voisey and William Voisey. But the original tomb here has the inscription to Eleanor Nailiel something like that and then it's hidden by the second stone the same thing on the next one uh, a stone not belonging has been laid flat on top of the table the actual table tomb is hard to read it's William Lyle I think L-Y-L-E This one is for John Shepherd, and the date is 17, could be 1786. I can see a surname on this one of Gardner. It would probably be possible to work this inscription out with some patience. Here we have the memorial to Elizabeth, the widow of P.H. Kahn. And this one here is the remnants of Catherine, the youngest daughter of the Reverend William Neal. N-E-Y-L-E. -E. That may be the surname we've seen on one or two others and not been able to read clearly. I almost missed this one amongst the larger stones. This is a war grave, war memorial. Private A.J. Bishop, Royal Army Service Corps, 9th of April 1921, age 25. A pair of crosses here and the memorials on the base. This one's John Charles Dunn, priest, who died in 1928. And if I pan across to there, we've got Stephen Woodham Dunn, only son of John Charles Dunn, late rector of Tor Bay. Father and son, both uh, in the faith, both ministers. This war grave is from the Second World War. Wing Commander J.H. Osborne, Royal Air Force, 9th of December 1943, age 34. Eliza A. Bow, 1958, age 78. But beneath that we have Lambert, her son, who was killed in action February the 2nd, 1942. Treasured memories of pilot officer Alan Edward Agat, only beloved son of Edward and Alice, killed while flying 
September the 29th, 1952, aged 24 years. So an air accident rather than a war casualty. This one here mentions the war. John Broadway, 2004, age 90. Reunited with his darling wife, fiancé, mother and father. Father who was killed in the Great War, 1917. Thank you, Violet and Kelly, for helping me. An interesting one. Martin Eric Jensen. Made England his home. Born Randers in Denmark, 1927. Died 1989. And much loved wife and mother, Wendy Joan Jensen who died in 2017. You wonder why from Denmark he ended up in the, the little, relatively remote village of Ippelpen in Devon. Well, I'm going to leave the pretty church and churchyard in the lovely village of Ippelpen in Devon it's really worth seeking this one out and spending some time here. It's a lovely spot, very peaceful. Till the next time.